Welcome back to the CryptoVisor podcast. Today we are talking about Cardano. We need to talk. So we are about seven or eight months when I'm recording this video from the Bitcoin halving. Now, as we've covered extensively on this channel, there are a lot of great milestones that Cardano has hit. There's a lot of great, you know, network activity, growth of the ecosystem, community engagement. But there's also some things that we need to kind of talk about and get straight because we are going to be entering a more volatile time in the crypto markets. And one of the things that I do is I am constantly analyzing the network activity, the network metrics of these blockchains. And not only am I looking at them and trying to understand a little bit more about how these metrics affect the price, how these metrics affect the ecosystem, I do think that it's important to remember that if you're buying crypto, and that goes for any crypto, whether it's Cardano or the like, there, there's a monetary incentive here, right? On this channel, we do talk about the money. This channel, we do talk about the price. I know there's a lot of Cardano uh, participants that don't want to talk about the price, don't want to talk about the coins. But if you think that somebody's investing in Cardano or building products on Cardano just because they love the protocol, it's bullshit. <laughs> they are doing it because they want to make money. And that is what this channel is about. It's about investing. It's about growing our wealth protecting our investments, and most importantly, protecting our financial future and our retirement. And so let's get into it. Don't forget to give this video a free thumbs up. As always, this is the CryptoVisor podcast. We talk about crypto, blockchain, and investing. That way you can hopefully protect your investments, build your wealth, and secure your financial future. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. That way you never miss a new video. And also give the video a free thumbs up because as you can see, Cardano's not free, but thumbs up are always free. So we're going to start here with the price. Now, Cardano's market cap, when I'm recording this, in the second half of 2023, is just under $10 billion. Now, at the peak of the market, it was significantly higher than this. It was around $30 or $40 billion. Remember, Cardano went in the last cycle from below $0.02. Cents. $0.02 cents was basically the ICO price in 2016, 2017. And we basically hit that at the low of the market, which was in March, when the market basically capitulated at the beginning of the pandemic and Cardano's price went down to about two cents. It, went, it was really 2.1 cents, but we'll just say two cents to keep everything even. And then at the peak of the market, just about a year and a half later, Cardano pumped all the way to $3.10. So if we just do the basic math on that, $3.10, and we divide that by... Uh, basically 2.1 cent. So 2.1 cents, that is 147 X or 150 times higher from the low to the, to the low point in the market to the top of the market. Now this is great and all, but I want to remind you that there was a lot of things that were not going on in Cardano at the time. We did not have DeFi. We were in the very early stages of staking on the Cardano blockchain. So one of the things that I look at when I'm looking at these metrics besides the actual price is DeFi. Now we're going to start with DeFi because DeFi is one of the newest, you know, capabilities that were launched on Cardano back in 2021 and then early 2022 as the market was declining, we started to see DeFi uh, protocols dropping on Cardano and deploying and then Cardano's total value locks started to increase. Now, Cardano's TVL, or total value locked, is about $145 million. This is about $600 million ADA. And I'm going to dive into that in just a minute. But I want to show you where Cardano compares to these other blockchains. And also the time that these blockchains have been around. So Cardano is less than half of what Solana has total value locked. And Solana has a 97% reduction in 2022 of their developer activity community. We also know that Solana has gone down countless times and Solana was pumped by FTX. While Solana has had a decline, Solana is still more than double the total value locked of Cardano. Base, which is Coinbase's blockchain, also more than double. And Base, from the time I'm recording this video, launched within six months of when I recorded this video. So Cardano has had DeFi capabilities for almost two years at this point. Base has been around for less than half a year, and Base already has more than double TVL locked for Card than Cardano. 
Then if we look at the layer twos for Ethereum, Arbitrum, Polygon, Optimism, and Avalanche, all of them have significantly more valuation locked in DeFi than Cardano has. With Arbitrum, basically more than 10x the amount of De uh, like DeFi locked in the protocol. And then Ethereum, obviously Cardano doesn't even come close and Cardano is Ethereum's largest competitor if you remove the layer twos. And so is Cardano actually keeping up in the DeFi ecosystem? If you're basing this straight on statistics, the answer is no. Now, again, you may not like this uh, analysis, but I'm trying to give you guys like my unbiased opinion on this. Uh, when I'm recording this video, I don't hold Ethereum and I don't hold Cardano at all. So I think that my viewpoint is very neutral, but I would definitely implore you guys to do your own research. Nothing of what I say is this financial advice. These are just my opinions and you know analysis on the market. Now, what Cardano does have going for it is in 2023, we have seen a significant increase in the amount of DeFi that is locked in Cardano. If we look at the ADA um, that is locked in, not the dollar amount, because obviously the dollar amount has gone down in the you know, bear market. You can see at the beginning of 2023, we had about 200 million ADA locked in DeFi. And currently we have just under 600 million, which is basically a 3x from where we started the year at, which is great growth, especially when many of those other chains that we just talked about have been seeing declining growth in DeFi. Uh, it's actually the opposite of growth. I don't even know what the word would be, but instead of increasing their underlying asset, like the Ether in DeFi, you're actually seeing a decrease in Ether in DeFi. But with that, we also have issues. And some of those issues are one, there's no major bridges that are built to other blockchains. If you look at all of these DeFi protocols in Cardano, pretty much none of these are able to connect to other blockchains. And I'm talking about connecting to the other blockchains the way that Arbitrum is able to connect to Ethereum, Polygon, Optimism, Solana, the way that Base is able to interoperate between Solana, Avalanche, Optimism, Polygon, etc. And the way that you can see that is if you click on the individual chain, you can actually go in and look at how many chains all of these protocols are on. So now we're on Ethereum, Lido has five chains connected to it, Aave has nine chains connected to it, Uniswap has eight chains connected to it, Curve Finance, 13 chains connected to it, Frax Finance, eight chains. So that means there's interoperability between multiple blockchains. This is true decentralization. SushiSwap, 28 chains are interconnected with Ethereum's capabilities. Now, if we look at Cardano, all of these chains are one, 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 one. Now that means that they're not interconnected. Now you could say, well, Muesli Swap is, has, has two chains, but it's Cardano and Milko Meta. Milko Meta is a Cardano-based protocol. Spectrum Finance, Cardano and Ergo. Ergo is another offshoot of Cardano. So there is no true decentralization. As much as Cardano communities say in my comments, Cryptovisor, there's this bridge and there's this bridge. It's nothing compared to the other blockchains as I just showed you and explained. So if you can tell me how this data is not accurate, I will be open to listening to it. But honestly, guys, the DeFi is not where it needs to be. And I thought that we would see better deployment of DeFi technologies and interoperability bridges than what we've seen. It's it's really, really uh, not that great. And so does DeFi affect the price of the coins? That is definitely up for interpretation and debate. But in my view, it definitely has a part to play because what we are seeing is all of the new chains are growing into the top 10, top 15 DeFi protocols. Arbitrum, brand new. Optimism, brand new. Base, brand new. Solana, fairly new. Uh, and then so on and so forth, right? Why is Cardano so far down on the list when it's been around since 2017 and had DeFi capabilities since the end of 2021? That I don't know the answer to. I'm not, an, I'm not a, a technology guy. I don't work for IO Global or Cardano Foundation. I'm an analyst and an investor. So I'm just looking at the data that we have and saying, is, is this what we, um, what we want or do we need more? Now, if we look at the staking ecosystem in Cardano, this is completely different than DeFi. Because Cardano staking, in my view, is the number one staking ecosystem in the planet, right? In blockchain. 
Cardano has been the longest running live staking ecosystem. It started the incentivized testnet for a testing ground in a live environment in 2019, launched on mainnet in 2020. So when I'm recording this video, over three years Cardano staking has been live on the mainnet. And over 63% of all the circulating ADA is locked in staking. Now I know you guys are gonna say Cryptovisor, it's not really locked in staking. You guys know what I'm talking about. So let's not get technical here, okay? Bottom line is we, we have seen a decrease, right? We went from about 74% of all the ADA in circulation in staking to now 63%. And as I've guesstimated, this pro number will probably decrease over the course of time as there's more areas where you can put your money. You could put your money in DeFi, you could just hold it on an exchange, you could trade it, whatever the situation. Some people are just not staking their ADA for whatever reasons but the staking ecosystem is robust. There's an opportunity to make anywhere from two and a half to three and a half, maybe 4% in annual rewards. And again, the reward number will also go down through the course of time as the price of the coin goes up and there's more participation um, in the ecosystem. So that's something to keep in mind as well. But Cardano does have a very robust ecosystem with over 3,000 stake pools. Some of these are not performing or don't have a lot of stake in them, but there's opportunity to definitely choose some good stake pools that are performing and that you can earn passive rewards on your holdings anyway. So when it comes to staking, completely the opposite of DeFi. DeFi is underwhelming and staking is actually overwhelming because it's so easy to do in, uh, in wallets you hold custody of your coin, you can unstake at any time, you could sell your coin at any time, you could send it to another address at any time, and you can't even do that with Ethereum. If you're staking on Ethereum, there's a withdrawal queue that could take, you know, potentially several epochs or blocks to actually finalize. So again, there's positives going on here and negatives going on, but also within the DeFi ecosystem, one of the negatives that we see is rug pulls or cash grabs. And we just saw that recently happen. I posted one video on my YouTube page. Just go to my YouTube page and type in Cardano rug pull or Cryptovisor Cardano rug. And you'll see this video where a DEX or decentralized exchange appears to have pulled the rug on their users. We also know that the JPG Foundation, which is basically the foundation that is driving the growth of the JPEG store NFT platform is basically they launched their own coin, which is questionable in the least anyway, and then supposedly had a liquidity provider that was dumping their coins on the market. And these tweets that you guys can read here explain a little bit more. And I also have some of this in uh, other videos that should be out by the time you're watching this video. Uh, but yeah, Husky Token said their translation from their statement about the liquidity providers dumping on the market is we hired someone to dump on you. It's your fault for pumping the price. So there are still issues with the Cardano ecosystem. I mean, obviously all these crypto ecosystems where there's money involved, there's a lot of issues that arise, you know, Ethereum, a lot of the Cardano community write in my comments, oh, well, Cryptovise, so the reason we don't have bridges to these other protocols is because all the bridges get hacked. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a risk of hacks, but there's also how many protocols built on Ethereum, 915. So if 10 of these protocols are hacked, or have wallets drained or whatever, or rug pulls, you know, a thousand protocols and 10 of those protocols, that's 1%. That's a very small percentage. Now with Cardano, I would imagine that the, the, the concern is if they release one bridge and that bridge gets hacked, that's a 100% hack rate, right? But this is why we need a more robust DeFi ecosystem. We need more protocols built. We need more interoperability and not building a bridge because you're scared the bridge is gonna get burned is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, right? That's like people who don't invest because they don't wanna lose any money. Well, if you don't play the game, you'll never win. And granted, you can lose the game. That's why diversification is key. And so when it comes to investing, is Cardano one of the coins that I wanna invest in? Yes, but not at these prices. And not because I don't think the price is going up. I do think the price is going to go up during the next cycle. But I also am not in a rush to own ADA because there are a lot of things that still need to be worked out and a lot of questions that I have about the development of the protocol and the development of DeFi and how it, Cardano is going to compete 
during this next cycle with many of these other chains that are moving much more rapidly in deployment of technologies than Cardano is. Those questions make me not rush into the investment. If you guys have been watching my videos for any length of time, you know that my target range is below 20 cents, which a lot of people don't think that we're gonna hit. I don't know why they think that because we're closer to 20 cents than we are a dollar. So the likelihood that we're actually gonna hit 20 cents is significantly higher than we're gonna hit a dollar, right? Which comes first. I'm not saying that we're gonna stay under 20 cents, but I think that we're gonna hit it. And then I'm gonna reassess my portfolio and then make a decision whether I wanna invest and put this into my portfolio for this next cycle. But again, this is about investing and building wealth. This is not about personal feelings, right? That's why you hear with business, you have to separate emotion and business, right? And so with investing, it's the same thing. There's a lot of people on my channel. Like I just posted on my community tab the other day. You guys can go to my uh, YouTube page and then click on the community tab. Choose one, 100 Bitcoin or 1 million Cardano. You, you will be shocked at the results of this poll when you go and take it. Because currently, 100 Bitcoin is worth around $2.5 million. 1 million ADA is worth about $250. Thousand dollars. So Bitcoin, 100 Bitcoin valued in dollars is worth 10 times as much as 1 million ADA. And yet people still chose 1 million ADA. This channel is about investing. This channel is about building your wealth, securing your financial future, making sure that you have enough for retirement. And the people who are choosing a million ADA, I don't understand. Like, I literally don't understand. Like, if you look at some of the comments, people will say, well, I think that ADA is going to go higher in value. Okay, but then you take the 100 Bitcoin, you liquidate 10 Bitcoin, and you buy a million ADA with 10 Bitcoin. Or whatever the, the number is. I, I, I'm just doing the math on the top of my head, but you guys kind of get the point. I, I don't understand why people are maximalists in this ecosystem. And when we look at all the metrics of Cardano versus the other blockchains, there's a lot of potential here. But based on the pace of deployment of the technology, I don't know that Cardano can keep up. And that's a concern that I have. Is the price gonna go up? Probably, because the rest of the market's gonna go up as well. But we, don't, we also don't know what is gonna be released and deployed over the next year or two. So we don't know if there's gonna be new technologies, new blockchains. And the more new blockchains that deploy, they're gonna be deploying with all the technology that all these top protocols have. They're gonna have everything that Solana has, everything that Coinbase's base have, everything that all the layer twos on Ethereum have, and all the technology that have Ethereum, and they're gonna be able to interoperate. So what's that, what that is gonna do is any new protocol that pops up, they're gonna insert themselves in the top 15, and that's gonna push everything outside the top 15 lower and lower and lower. And eventually it can go into oblivion. So Cardano does need to keep up. There is a rush to get this technology deployed. And anybody who thinks different, I would love to know why you think that way. Because I'm looking at this from a financial perspective, from venture capitalists who are looking at all of the DeFi ecosystems and saying, hmm, which one should I invest in? And the more that pop up in the top 10, the less, um, the less focus they're gonna even have on Cardano. And there's a lot of people in Cardano that don't think that Cardano needs venture capitalists, but I think that they do. And as we saw from this JPG Foundation situation, well, so do the protocols that are launching coins. So anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on this. I do plan on owning Cardano. I'm just waiting for a good entry point. These are my opinions, my analysis on the market. You may not agree with it, that's okay. We can agree to disagree because at the end of the day, everybody's investment strategy and opinions are different and we're all entitled to them. See you guys tomorrow, invest responsibly, do your own research, give the video an absolutely free thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That way you never miss a new video. I'll see you guys tomorrow, crypto on.